During World War II, Japanese Buddhists seized control of Indonesia for three years, killing millions of Indonesian Muslims. The Japanese forced hundreds of thousands of Indonesians to work as slave laborers on military and economic projects, like constructing the infamous Burma Railway. The laborers were brutally worked without adequate food and health care, such that many of them died. The Japanese likewise forced countless Indonesian women into prostitution. They also looted the country's resources, thereby causing mass famine and disease. The United Nations has estimated that Japanese policies resulted in 300,000 deaths among Indonesian slave laborers. More generally, Japanese policies resulted in roughly 4 million deaths throughout the country. Well over 3 million of these deaths were Muslims. Unfortunately, this Japanese genocide of Muslims has not received much attention partly due to complex political factors. Indonesian nationalists viewed the Japanese as allies against Dutch colonial powers they were trying to expel. This allyship of convenience provided cover for Japan's crimes against poor Indonesian Muslims. Buddhism celebrates the virtue of ahimsa or nonviolence. Nevertheless, Buddhists have always recognized that law and warfare are necessary for any society. This situation is resolved by having monks practice ahimsa while permitting the government to impose laws and wage wars to protect Buddhism and to advance the ethnic and racial interests of the Buddhist population. Hence, Buddhism throughout history has gone hand in hand with violent ethno-nationalism. Muslims in Sri Lanka are violently persecuted in the name of Buddhism and Sinhalese ethnic nationalism. Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar are violently persecuted in the name of Buddhism and Burmese nationalism. Similarly, millions of Muslims were killed by Japanese who endorsed a mixture of Buddhism, Shintoism, and Japanese nationalism. Mixtures of Buddhism and violent ethno-nationalism have been endorsed by the most influential modern Buddhist religious authorities, such as Anagarika Dharmapala and D.T. Suzuki. Why is it that we only hear about violence inflicted by Muslims, but not by Buddhists? Buddhist authorities prescribe non-violence for monks, but they legitimate a violent mixture of Buddhism and ethno-nationalism for the general population. The notion of a pacifist Buddhism derives from misleading religious apologetics and functions to obscure the mass forms of violence Buddhists have long used and continue to use against Muslims.